here is what I'm going to do. I'll first just uh, introduce myself and then we will get into the specifics for today. During the discussion, you can type in any questions that you have. I might not answer them immediately, but by the end of this session, I'll try to answer every question that comes in. All right, so first a quick introduction. I have been helping candidates prepare for the level two exam since 2010. So it's been several years. And over the years, I have realized that there are certain techniques that can be followed which help maximize the probability of passing and I'll, I'll share those. There is no rocket science though. End of the day, you need to study hard and you need to practice a lot, but there are certain areas that you can focus on which will help your chances. Just a little more in terms of the introduction. In 2010, I started teaching live classes then in 2011, I started releasing videos for level one, which became very popular. Then the following year in 2012, I released videos for level two. And many students who used our level one videos then went on to use level two videos. And now uh, the level two videos and a year later, I started doing level three videos. So at this stage, we have videos for all three levels. And in terms of actual study notes, we did study notes for level one for 2014. And now we are working on study notes for level two also. So there is a fair amount of work that's going on. Now I will get into the details of level two. Most of you have done level one and are now doing level two for the first time. Some of you might have attempted the level two exam before. And what I'm going to show here is the fact that at level two, it's the same 10 topics. So starting with ethics and going to portfolio management. So the topics are all the same, but there are some differences. The weightages are different. And I'll emphasize this point. The weightages obviously are different compared to level one. But another big thing is for those who've done level two in the past, the weightages have also changed since last year. Ethics was extremely important at level one and it still is. Up till last year, the ethics weight at level two was 10%. Now it is 15%. This means that you might get two or three case studies or in other words, the importance of ethics at level two has gone up even further. Quant is five to 10% of the exam which means that you will either have one case study or two case studies. And I'll talk about these case studies later. So at level one, there was a fixed number in terms of the weighted. So with economics, 10%, so you knew that you are getting 24 questions. At level two, it's not fixed. So for all topics, notice that there is a range. Another point I want to make is that the subject matter builds on what you did at level one. So if we take derivatives, for example, at level one, we understood the basic concept behind forward contracts. We understood what is a forward rate agreement and so on. At level two, it gets deeper in the sense that we now learn how to price and value instruments. Similarly, you know, fixed income takes off where you left off at level one and goes deeper. Equity investments, again, same material, but a whole lot deeper. So the point is that it's much more rigorous, much more quantitative. If you like numbers, then you will enjoy level two. If you are not that fond of crunching numbers, then be prepared for a lot of work because without getting comfortable with numbers, it's not easy to do well at level two. All right, now I'll just share some thoughts on the exam format. Like level one, we have two three hour sessions. In most countries, it will be from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock and then a two hour break and then from two o'clock to five o'clock. So that's exactly like level one. In each segment, so let's take the nine to 12 segment, there will be 10 case studies and each case study will have six multiple choice 
questions, which means that you have 18 minutes per case study. So, case, so 10 case studies in 3 hours, 18 minutes per case study, that's 180 minutes or 3 hours. And here is an example of what the morning exam or any, actually the afternoon exam follows the exact same format. So, this is what it might look like. Questions 1 to 6, this means case study number 1 will typically be ethics. And then, unlike level 1, the questions can come in any order. So, question 7 to 12, which is the second case study, might be derivatives. It might be equity. So, we are not sure what it will be. And on the exam, it might actually make sense for you to do the topics that you are more comfortable with first. That's still a while away, but I generally advise my students to start with what they are good at and then the most difficult topics or the topics that they are not that comfortable with should ideally be dealt with at the end. As I mentioned before, typically there will be a lot of calculations, especially in topics like derivatives and fixed income. So, later on we will talk about practice. Obviously, if you have done a fair amount of practice, then on the exam this will not be too difficult. In one case study, it is possible to have multiple readings covered. So, for example, with derivatives, in one case study, you might easily see questions based on options, forward contracts, and futures contracts. So, unlike level 1, where each question was independent and typically from one reading, at level 2, it's more integrated. Generally, you will not get one case study that spans multiple topics, but that cannot be ruled out. So, at the very least, you need to be prepared to deal with case studies that cover multiple readings. All right. Now, many of you are starting now or you might have started recently, but I strongly recommend that you make a schedule. And here is a, a sample template. This is, if, if you write to our support team, you can get a file from us that basically shows you all the readings. In this particular case, it also has our video lectures, which if you do have, then it will be useful. If you don't have, you can at least use this or make something of your own, where you take all the topics and all the readings and at least initially at a topic level, you need to decide how much time you will spend. Now, to make your schedule, you should look at the weightage of the topic and also your understanding of that topic. So, simply put, if a topic is heavyweight, so for example, equity and FRA have a larger weight, so obviously you need to spend more time on that topic. If you know that you are weak at a given topic, then that also would imply that you need to spend more time on it. So, you make your schedule. Then, a question often comes up in terms of how many hours must we study. The answer is that it obviously depends on you. You need to study enough to stay on schedule. And I will talk about over the next few slides what it means to cover a given reading. But some people might spend two hours a day and stay on track and then spend, let's say, six, seven, eight hours over the weekend. Other people might get through spending less time. It really depends on how quickly you absorb the material and on your background. But no matter what, you have to stick to the schedule because if everything gets pushed off to the end, then that will just create an immense amount of frustration. So. Start early, make your schedule, and then do your best to stick to that schedule. It's also extremely important that you understand your learning style. Now, what I'm going to do here is share some thoughts in terms of what you absolutely must do, and then what are the areas where you can pick your style and study in a way that works for you. Now, when you study, point number one or step number one is to understand the concepts. So, let's say that you are on quantitative methods and you are on the first couple of readings which deal with regression. So, obviously, before you do any questions, you need to understand what regression is all about. So, that's 
step number one. Now, how do you do that? There are different ways of doing this. You can read the curriculum. The challenge with reading the curriculum, though, is that it takes a long time. So if you're not comfortable reading and you have defined your schedule, which says that, let's say, the reading on multiple regression needs to be completed by 23rd December, given your schedule, and you start reading the curriculum and you realize that this is taking way too long and you cannot meet this deadline that you have set, then you look at other ways. So you can also use notes. There are several prep providers that provide their notes and now IFT is also providing notes. So you identify the prep provider that you like the most and you get their notes to complement the curriculum. Another thing that you can do is get videos. And now depending on which videos you use, again, you, you figure out who you like. You, you try videos from a few different providers and then pick the one that you like the most. But, you know, a quick little plug for our videos. Our videos are based on the curriculum. So as I'll discuss later, you can actually have the curriculum open and listen to the videos. And essentially, we walk you through the most important points. So the advantage of doing it this way is that it just takes you through the material faster by letting you know what is important and what to focus on. But the major point with step one is that you have to understand the basic concepts. You don't need to become an expert at everything. So I have seen very smart people who spend a lot of time reading the curriculum. But the problem then is that this takes so much time that they end up knowing a few topics very well, but then don't have time to do justice to the other topics. So that's why I can't emphasize enough the fact that you need to have a schedule and do your best to stick to it, even if that means that you don't get into the depths of every single point that you might find in the curriculum. So you do step one, you get the main points, then you work through the curriculum examples. In many of our video lectures, we talk about the examples. You can do these on your own. The curriculum obviously gives these examples and explains them. So often these examples become the basis of questions on the exam. So work through the curriculum examples and understand what's being done. Now, you can come to this point after having done any of these. So you could be doing one or more. You could be the sort who just breezes through the curriculum, reads notes, does the videos. Or you might be, you know, people who take immense shortcuts are those who just listen to videos, those who want to do the, a thorough job, read the curriculum. So no matter what you do, after that or during this exercise, make sure you are going over the curriculum examples. Then step three is to do the practice problems at the end of every reading. So almost all the level two readings have practice problems at the end. Some tend to be in case study format. Other times there might be questions not in case study format, but in either case, do the curriculum practice problems. These problems are made by the same people who create your exam. So I highly recommend, or in fact, I almost say that it's a must that you have to do the curriculum practice problems. Then once you are done with a given topic, I've been talking about quantitative methods. So in 2015, quantitative methods are three readings, so that's all of quant. After that, you should do a quiz that covers quantitative methods. Similarly, when you are done with the next topic, which is economics, then you should do a quiz on economics. So notice what's happening with steps two, three, and four. What we are doing here is practicing at different levels. As you go through a reading, and let's say that you know I stick to this regression example, in the regression reading, you cover a given point related to the assumptions behind regression, or you study the concept of uh, heteroscedasticity. The examples that you do will immediately follow a specific concept or a specific set of learning outcomes that you have covered. So you can think of this as material. You can think of these examples as helping you with specific items in the reading. So you learn a concept in the reading, and the examples help you consolidate that concept. Then in step three, where you are doing practice problems, here you are testing yourself now on how well you've understood the overall reading. Then with four, 
you are testing yourself in terms of how well you have understood that topic. So key as you notice is working through questions. At the end of the day on your exam you are being tested on how well you can answer questions. So if during your studies you have worked through several questions then obviously on the exam it will be easier for you. Some people spend a lot of time studying, not enough time practicing and typically they do not do too well on the exam. So what I have put in this box is material that you must do. If you are looking for more and you, you do all this and you have more time then you can do practice questions from other sources. What I mean here is that in addition to questions that you can get from the CFA Institute there will be questions from various prep providers so if you have additional time then you do those questions but think of these questions as a supplement or questions that go in addition to the curriculum questions. You might be wondering where these topical quizzes come from. The curriculum itself doesn't have topical quizzes but if you go to the CFA Institute website at some point they will make quizzes available on a per topic basis. So make sure that when those topical item sets or topical quizzes are available that you do them. So key point being any set of questions that are published by the CFA Institute in my opinion those are highest priority, those are the best practice. Now this all the items in this box obviously you will do per your schedule. Let's say that you create a schedule such that you are done five weeks before the actual exam and that is actually a good target to have. If your exam is on fixed uh, on the 5th or 6th of June try to get done with your review of all the topics by the end of April. So that will give you all of May and a few days in June to review your material because there is a tremendous amount of material to be covered. Obviously you will forget topics that you have done in the past so you need to spend a lot of time reviewing and even more important is you need to spend, spend time doing lots of mock exams. The CFA Institute makes mock exams available and you can also do mock exams from other prep providers but here you are actually doing full length exams that cover all the topics. So in a sense I would say that this is your final level. So step two was at a learning outcome level, step three is at a reading level, four is at a topic level and these mock exams then are at the overall level two curriculum level. So if you practiced at all these levels then your actual exam is obviously going to look like this to some extent. So you will be ready if you have done a lot of practice. All right, now if you are using IFT products and services then there is some advice and there are other vendors out there so I would actually say that you try out you know sample material and figure out where you are most comfortable. If you are using our material our major product is the video lectures and we have created these video lectures based on the curriculum so we flow with the curriculum our section numbers are based on the curriculum. So if you are listening to our video lectures make sure you have the curriculum open at the same time. If you don't have the curriculum handy maybe you can have a printed version of the slides available. So you listen to our lecture, try to make notes either in the curriculum or on your hard copy and when I say work through a given example then I actually want you to try and do the example on your own before you look at the solution. If you have bought a basic plus or if you bought some of our packages you will also get our notes and in addition if, if, you, if you find it useful you can read those notes along with the curriculum. And I want you to take notes too. When you take notes you, you learn and if you are creating your own fact and formula sheet then it is much easier to review your own work. So let's say you get done with quant then go to economics and FRA. Once in a while go back and look at your notes. This will help you with retention. I'm sure you recall from level one that one of the largest issues was that you would get to a particular topic and then forget 
what you did earlier. Now, if you have your own notes and once a week or once in two weeks you go back and look at your notes from past topics, that will just help you retain material. After you are done with the video lectures and the notes for a given reading, then do the curriculum practice problems. I have mentioned this before and I keep saying this and I will say it again that doing these problems at the end of every reading is a must. So earlier when I said that you need to have a schedule, so for a given reading, let's say you have a schedule that will be done by 23rd December, being done means that you have done the practice problems for that reading. So you have listened to the video or read the notes or read the curriculum, done whatever suits you. But to be done with the reading, you should have done the examples, gone over the examples and done the practice problems. Once you do that, then we can check off that reading that yes, it is done. So I'll go back to a question that was asked. So how many hours? Now that is up to you. So you see how many hours it takes you to be able to get the practice problems done and the examples done. That's how many hours you need to spend. For some people, it will be an average of three hours a day. For other people, it might be more than that. I've noticed that many of my students, those who do well, you know, the average is that during the weekdays, most people work actually. So during the weekdays, they try to spend two to three hours during the day. And during the weekend, they typically spend six to seven hours per day studying. So it's a lot of studies. For those who will be using our products and services, here is another option that anything you don't understand, so first of all you have to follow a particular schedule that we've published and if you don't understand something then we will have our live sessions once a week. So these are starting in January, so level 2 is starting on 10th January. The first topic that we'll cover is quant. So if you, you have to do quant before that, and by 8th January, and all these dates are available on our website, you will share your questions related to quant. Then during the live session on 10th January, which will be structured sort of like this session, I will go over the questions that you have submitted. So this way you, you get help along the way. Uh, if you don't understand something, you have somebody to ask. All right, so more on what to practice, and I've said this several times, and I think it's important enough. That's why I keep repeating. So I have talked about the practice problems. Now I'm making one more point, which is that you need to do the practice problems at least three times before the exam. The reason I say this is I've seen over the years that a student might make a particular mi mistake the first time he or she attempted a practice problem, and then later on they make the same mistake. Now. You might have gotten a question wrong the first time, then the second time also you might get it wrong, but the third time you do that question, then typically you will get it right. So do it a few times. The first time obviously is the first time you are doing that reading, then the second time might be towards uh, the middle of your course as you are reviewing. You can go back and look at things you got wrong, and then the third time would be perhaps during the last month when you are doing your final review. After every topic, do your topical quizzes. And as I said, there might be quizzes from other sources. They are a supplement, not a substitute. And lots of mock exams in the final month. So first, so they are the mock exams published by the CFA Institute. And then there might be mock exams from other prep providers. All right, so Shanawaz is asking how to submit the question. So, there will be, uh, so we will let you know, as in there will be either a LinkedIn group or some method that our support team will announce in terms of exactly how you send your questions.